Hey free to play gang, welcome back to another video. My voice is finally back and I'm ready to make more videos. But anyway, let's start with something a little bit more beginner friendly because I, I feel like uh, there's going to be an anniversary coming around and there's of course the JP, Korea and traditional Chinese servers out already. I don't think they actually watch English videos all that much, which is why I didn't actually start churning them out. But I'm just going to start doing some in preparation for the mainly the anniversary event that's coming soon. So for the first video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can build pretty much the best PvE starter team and it is almost completely free or rather it is completely free as well. So I'm going to show you how I formulate this team and how I pieced it together and how this is going to work. Uh, this is probably going to help you. I mean, I know a lot of my viewers are already like super well versed with the game, more well versed than me as well. But I still feel like based on my experience in the game playing for like more than 400 hour days thus far, this is going to be a team that is definitely going to help you not just clear your story, which is very important in getting your summons, but also clearing the tower as well. So within like maybe the first week or maybe in the first two weeks of playing the game, it is actually very much possible for you to clear the entire spatial tower, all 100 floors of it, and probably even do pretty well in the temporal tower as well. So let's take a look at what are the aspects that make your PvE team really great. And we're going to start off by talking about the twins. The twins are amazing. They are probably one of the best PvE aspects in the game, right? This duo, they work so well together. So let me show you why this is the case and let me explain a little bit more about why they are so great. Now, from one of the recent updates, they are actually both completely free. I'm not talking about buying them from the shop. They are actually literally free within like the first five days of playing the game. They will come into your account completely free. So they're also great for control, really great for damage as well. And they have extremely, extremely long shelf life. They are still very viable even in this current state of the game right now. Or even at the end game where I am right now, they are still extremely useful. And not only are they really good at clearing story and the tower itself, they are also really good for, okay, maybe... Yeah, okay, I would say that they are pretty good for Kronos as well, but it's more so for the Black Twin because the Black Twin is able to defense break, he's able to land Seer, he's able to land Slows as well. A lot of good stuff packed into the Black Twin, which makes him so good for Kronos, but I'm pretty sure that he kind of works well with the White Twin in Kronos as well. It's going to be a little bit more specific in this team comp, but it's going to work as well. But of course, on top of that, what they also carry is two different leader buffs that is going to be very helpful for you. So number one, crit rate is going to be excellent for new players, okay? So mostly going to be good for new players only, not so good for endgame players. But if, let's say, you're moving up to mid-game, for example, or close to mid-game and where you can actually start clearing like temporal tower the accuracy lead here is actually quite useful as well so using them together gives you more options in terms of just leader buffs right so let's take a look at why they are so good and we're gonna use them in the vr battlegrounds just to showcase a little bit more why this is the case all right so you take a look at the white twin right so if you take a look at his second skill attacks two and uh, attacks all enemies twice but the thing is when the black twin is present you then attack another two more times for a total of four hits this is so insane right but take a look at his third skill as well so Attacks one enemy twice, damage per hit, blah 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 blah, and then you steal AP and a second hit extends uh, enemy's debuffs by one turn. And afterwards, you actually call the Black Twin, or the Red Twin, some of you guys call it the Red Twin, to assist with his third skill as well. And this is exactly what his third skill does, right? Grunts create up to all allies for two turns, and attacks one enemy three times, damage is 80%, blah 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 blah. And then afterwards, if he used this skill on his own, he would call the White Twin to assist with the White Twin's third skill. So there is a lot of uh, synergy between these two aspects. And I know I'm showcasing a little bit of their R6 effect here, which is this part, affecting all allies. This is their R6 effect, which is not going to be true for you at all. But just take note that they do become extremely strong at R6 as well. And then now taking a look at the Black Twin's second skill, Dead End. Attacks all enemies twice, but if the White Twin is present, you would attack two more times as well. So for a total of four hits. Uh, landing speed down and dealing good damage as well. So they work really well together and this is how it looks like on auto. Almost a full team stun, right? Almost. Very close. And now I use, it, I use my third skill <laughs> and that triggers the white twin to use his third skill. And now my white twin uses his third skill and that triggered the black twin to use his third skill. So there is a lot of DPS, a lot of output coming from these two experts here together. There's a lot of AP control, a lot of defense breaks, a lot of slows, stuns, seer debuffs, uh, debuff extensions. So pretty sick. We are actually doing a really good job clearing this field over here. And yeah, that's about it. So that's, that's just one run of the VR Battlegrounds, super easy, really, really fast. They work so well together. It seems like they're taking so many turns because they are calling each other to attack like 30% of the time. Now, moving on to the next step in how you can further improve this PvE team, right? And I probably have to increase the levels of the enemies here. Uh, the next Esper that is going to be excellent in this lineup, who is also completely free to play, right? Completely free to play. She is free 
right now for the next 90 days. If you complete chapter 1-13 in the main story itself, right, easy mode, you're going to obtain Tiang Man for free and, and this is going to be like the best purchase in your life, right? I mean, she's free anyway. Now let's take a look at why she is so good, starting off with her third skill. Okay, so you attack all enemies three times, total damage is blah blah blah, and you inflict Nether Bloom on the third hit. So why this is so good is what Nether Bloom actually does. So the status carrier will suffer a Nether Bloom blast after taking five attacks. Now this blast deals damage equal to 85% of the caster's attack, which is uh, herself, to the carrier and two other random enemies as well. 50% chance of silencing the affected enemies for two turns. So she, her, like her Nether Bloom debuff, which actually occurs on all of her skills as well, is actually really powerful and it's very potent. And the thing is, because of the chain explosion that could happen, she becomes one of the most powerful damage dealing experts in this game right now and it's a really good news that she's free to play. But of course on top of that, this is her passive. When attacking, if a target is afflicted with Nether Bloom, you also inflict poison on them for two turns, which is also pretty good in dealing with enemies with a lot of HP. So whenever the, whenever the enemies take a turn, they're going to lose 4% of their HP via the poison effect itself. But of course enough talking, let me, let me just show you why this team is so powerful. Let me just increase their level a little bit to like, let's say 80, right? And I'm going to actually turn off the auto for just a bit, just to, oh, it's really off. Uh, just to showcase why this combination is so powerful. Just this trio over here. We failed to stun. Wow, amazing. <laughs> what a great showcase. All right, nothing happened over there. So we are going to stun. Hopefully we get the stun on the, okay, good, the cleanser. That's really good. So that's going to be excellent for our showcase. So we're going to use our third skill, right? This applies Nether Bloom to all the enemies. And what you notice is that there is uh, five ticks over here, right? As you can see. So we need a total of five attacks just to pop that one Nether Bloom debuff. And we can actually do it very easily. We can do it with either our third skill or our second skill, which actually brings it a little bit closer. So the thing is, our third skill actually hits one enemy three times. And that will also call the White Twin to use his third skill, which hits the enemy for uh, two more times, right? So it's going to look something like this. We are going to do a lot of damage here. Boom, boom, boom. We call the White Twin to attack. And we actually pop the Nether Bloom as well. So that actually did some extra explosion damage, which is where the synergy lies. And then now we can also use our White Twin's third skill on another enemy, let's say the, the, this healer over here. Double hit, followed up by a triple hit. Boom, 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 explode. <laughs> and that's it. So there is a lot of damage in this setup over here. A, a crazy amount of damage. And take a look at this, right? So now this guy has four more ticks, four more ticks. And we can just use our second skill, which hits a total of four times. And this is what's going to happen. Boom, more AoE damage just like that. And I know you might be thinking like, okay, that wasn't like an insane amount of damage, but... <laughs> What you must understand is whenever this kind of piles up a little bit and when Jiang Man is actually counter-attacking a little bit more because of a passive effect, the damage actually adds up a lot. So that's basically it. We are pretty much done with this. And let's take a look at the damage numbers for a bit. I mean, the Black Twin is uh, dealing qu quite good damage, right, as you can see. But what you notice is that Jiang Man is actually doing the bulk of it. Like she's doing 30% or maybe up to 35% more damage than the Black Twin himself. So Jiang Man is definitely one of the best free-to-play experts that you can have. Now, to add on to this current setup, we are missing some key experts. So the thing is, if we do not land the controls, if we are not able to control them well enough, the problem here is that we're going to start dying, right? We're going to start losing our HP, and that's not what we need. So another very free-to-play expert that is going to help you in that healing regard is actually one expert that has been recently shadow buffed, in a sense. So that's going to be Chang Pu. And the reason why I say that she's shadow buffed is that right now, she would always use her third skill first, which means that your whole team is always going to have immunity at the start, which is excellent. This is going to be really good, especially in dealing with content such as Kronos, because you need to protect your entire team from getting stunned. And of course, not only does she have a heal on her third skill as well, she also has a healing on her second skill. And those skills have very short cooldowns of three turns and two turns. And to top it off, her first skill itself also absorbs AP, which is really good in dealing with some of the content, like let's say Ritual Miracles and even the Temporal Tower content as well. Very good healer over here. Very good for free-to-play players. But obviously, as you progress through the game, if let's say you get other different healers, let's say you get a Hengre, for example, you get a Clara, they are probably going to be better off than her. But I think for the most part, she is a really good free-to-play expert just because of how AI works. So let's take a look at why this is the case. We're actually going to run this on auto just to prove that she used her third skill first, right? We need to see the immunity at the start. There we go, we are using our third skill. So perfect AI. I think this is a pretty smart AI, although she's not smart in terms of healing, but at least she applies the immunity for you, which means that your team is protected from stunts, your team is protected from defense breaks, protected from like all kinds of controls basically, right? Even AP manipulation as well. So your team is really safe. So that means that we can just auto this and we should be able to clear this super well. Like if we start losing HP, she's just going to start healing and her healing uptime is so good that, yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out really well for you, especially for like the early to mid game uh, at least. But anyway, these three main DPS experts, they are going to carry you all the way to 
further than the end game, like beyond the end game. <laughs> they are that good and they are that viable right now. And there you go, see, more, in, uh, more immunity, right? So if you run Changpu on the ocean set, you have a potential to reset her third skill a bit sooner, which means your team could potentially be perpetually on uh, an immunity buff, which is excellent. Now this in itself is enough for the early and mid game. Like you can actually run a team of four and you're gonna beat all content this way. But the main issue comes where you start to lose out in speed in some of the content. So like for example, against some of the enemies in a temporal tower, they may be a little bit faster than you or they may be a little bit too tanky and not able to deal with it, right? So the last spot is where you might want an Esper that has a little bit of auxiliary effect. And what I'm talking about is probably a really good leader buff that you need. So like for example, if you do get a Long Mian, who is also a 4 star as well, he's not free, okay? You need to actually summon for him. But if you do get him, which you might, he does carry a speed leader buff with him. And why this is so powerful is because this increases all their speeds by 20% of their base speed. So let's say we remove Longmian over here. Let's just switch the leader a little bit. You notice that all their speeds actually decrease, right? But that's because by adding Longmian as the leader, that gives us an additional 20% of our base speed. So this is going to help us to lap some of the enemies over here. So like for example, these level 80 enemies, we were able to outspeed the White Twin, but we were not able to outspeed with the Black Twin, for example, right? But in fact, now that we are a little bit faster with the speed lead, we can actually go ahead to fight something a little bit harder. Like maybe let's say, can we do level 100? I'm not sure. They have, oh my god, 200, almost 206, okay, 252 speed. But we should be able to do very well here because our espers are generally kind of fast. I mean, we have a Lomian who is faster than them at least, which means we could start off with an instant freeze. And that could just, you know, complete the run for us. Like, let's say this is a temporal tower floor or a spatial tower floor. And we just nice outspeed them because we had the long man, right? So we're actually going to freeze them at the start. We didn't manage to get all the freezes that we needed, but we can always just restart this, right? Like, for example, if this was a spatial tower floor or a temporal tower floor and you needed that early freeze, you can always just restart for free. It's not going to cost you anything at all. And you might get something a little bit better like this. Like, let's say right now we actually controlled their cleanser, which is great. So this is going to work out really well for us. And if you run this on auto against a bunch of level 100 enemies, let's see how this performs. Diamond's gonna move next. And we are gonna land some... Uh, we're gonna pop some of her, her debuffs at least, right? Hopefully you get to see more controls as well. But of course for the most part, if you're beating like Temporal Tower Floss and all that, uh, it's a good idea to manual play. It's not a good idea to auto play. I just love to auto play because I'm, I'm a lazy gamer. I don't care too much about manually completing content. So we're doing pretty fine. In terms of control, we are definitely doing very well. And in terms of healing, Changpu, go. Nice. 12.6 thousand HP. Very nice healing. So in terms of control, in terms of damage, in terms of healing, everything is within this team itself. This team is completely complete. <laughs> completely complete, right? But maybe one way that if, let's say, you do not need that much control, because we, we have so much control, you might not actually realize it, but we also have another form of control called a silence, which means this enemy can only use his basic ability, and that comes from Jiang Man's passive as well. So whenever she pops her nether bloom, right, which I talked about earlier, she actually has a 50% chance of silencing the enemy. So if you feel like there is way too much control on this lineup, you can actually change it a little bit. You might not need Long Mian here. You, you could possibly change him up for one of your starter espers, like either Li Ling or Tang Xuan. Both are going to be okay because they bring the attack lead as well. But this is more for like, maybe mid to end game content where you are a little bit faster as well. So let me just give you an idea of what that's gonna look like. So let's say I remove him, right? I remove Long Mian, which I do not actually recommend. Okay, Long Mian is really good. Now let's say I add Tang Xuan into the mix, right? So I have a bunch of relics on him. I think he is, okay, he's gonna work pretty well. So like, let's say you're able to clear certain content really well. You don't need a speed lead. You don't need extra control. Uh, this could work out for you, but let's take a look at how this is supposed to function. So the enemies are actually gonna outspeed us for the most part. Right, they are going to outspeed us, but I think we should be okay because we have a pretty good healer. Our Changpu is going to be enough. Okay, yeah, so we're going to heal like that, run on auto. And this might actually perform even better as well because there is great synergy with Tang Xuan and Li Ling with Jiang Man because they, they land a, a few multi-hits, right? They land some AoE attacks as well, which is going to be great in removing or at least popping the Nether Bloom debuffs that the enemies have. So this is going to work out if you need more damage in place of the, the control and the speed. Yeah, so this is only more for like mid to end game content, like I said, where, yeah, you see, we are just clearing this so fast, right? Where you do not need the extra speed anymore, or maybe because you already have the speed. But yeah, that's about it. So a really, really solid team as well. This is going to work very well. 
And of course, Tangshen here dealing the most damage, of course. So just to summarize, what your team needs is to have a really good healer, which you can replace Changpu down the line if you have a Hengre or you have a Clara, right? And you also need the twins because they are really good for control, they are really good for damage as well, they are really good for all their debuffs, debuff extension as well. And you're gonna need Jiangman for a lot of extra DPS and some really helpful debuffs like the silence, like the poisons. And of course your final option is either gonna be a speed lead, an attack lead, whatever it might be, those are pretty much free to play. Lomia is not free to play but it's gonna be very easy for you to summon him because at the start you're gonna get a whole ton of summons anyway. You are bound to get at least one copy of Lomian. Now anyway, with that said, that's the end of this video. If you have any other questions, leave it down in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more dislike content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.